Okay, I'm going to keep this brief, because in 55 minutes I'm playing Rochelle Wu in round 2. Uh, last night I played Aaron Jacobson, ended in a draw, and today I'm black against Rochelle, who's a player that I've never played over the board before, but she's had good results recently. And, um, okay, for now I'll do a little bit of from the last minute opening preparation. I already have an idea what I'll play. Um, I'm expecting d4. And I'm planning to play an opening that I've never actually played before, which is knight c6, the so-called knight's tango. Um, I think it's a, a decent option to try and make things dynamic early to throw her off. Uh, at least throw her outside of her comfort zone and get a position where at least ideas will be simple for me. So there's a few moves that white can play here. Um, there's knight c3, which I think she's had once in a like, chess.com game, after which I would play e5, d5, knight e7, and um, I was actually inspired by Fabiano Caruana, who played this a few months ago in the Pro Chess League. And I have a game here where he just developed normally to make sure, oops, to make sure that uh, black castles before playing d6. d6 would be a tragic blunder due to queen a4 check. So castling. And this is a just very pleasant structure for black to play. And Fabiano played very nicely. Yeah, a4 slowing down the queen side. And then very nice move here, knight e4, preparing the f-pawn push. Sometimes it just takes one game to, to be inspired to play a certain opening. The knight takes g2 is great, uh, great finish. So etc, etc. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'd be happy if I see knight c3. Go back to oops. We go back to this position, knight c3. Um, I mean, well, I could play e4. Yeah, actually, this is one of the main lines. Then the bishop should go to still go to c5, I guess. Check the database here. Okay, bishop c5 at top level. What do I have here? Bishop e2. Ah, uh, yeah, white can't take the pawn because rook takes h5, bishop takes, takes, queen takes h5, f2 hangs in the end. And then black just wants to go for c6 and queen b6. Any games in this position? g3. Stockfish. Oops. Yeah, c6. And stockfish is a little bit biased. Because it likes white space advantage. King f1 is very strange. Let's say knight. Let's say queen c2. Looks solid. Queen b6. Ah, queen b6, bishop d3. Knight g4. g4, f6. Yeah, things could quickly like turn good for black. Bishop d4 coming. Okay. So I don't think this game is going to be so much about like specific opening preparation. It's more about just getting a structure which I'll hopefully be comfortable to play. Um, so knight f3 is another move. Knight f3 prevents e5. So after which I play e6. And then, yeah, there's a few moves that white can play here. I think between knight c3, a3, and g3. I think with knight c3 and g3, the plan is the same, just bishop b4. Eventually the bishop gets traded off and go for some idea like this. 
um, like d6 and e5 is probably the best way to justify the knights on c6. So I think what I'll do, I'll just go through the lines that I have and then I'll look through some like high level games in the Knights Tango. So a3, ah uh, yeah, so the a3 is this um, a Kobian Caruana game. So another Fabiano Caruana game, it plays d6 and then g6. Looks weird, but turned out to be solid. Yeah, g5 is nice. Yeah, very solid position. If people want to find the full game, you can Google it. Um, Akobi and Caruana, 2017. I think this was played in the Pro Chess League. So, is that the extent of my opening preparation? I think that, oh, there's one more line, D5. Yeah, so D5 I'm not expecting. Um, but just for view, yeah, just 95 and then E6 will come. Or even C6. E4 is interesting. E4 is still E6. Now E4 I think is already like really good for black. Because white's just overextended. Queen H4 is a threat. Um, this is a threat. Knight's never trapped because F5. Yeah, it's just a nice position. So D5. Let's look at knight C3. Also looks solid. What if knight c3, e5 takes, knight takes? Now this is also very solid. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember this bishop d6 idea. And if b4, I assume rook e8? Or b6? Maybe b6. Hmm, a5. Okay, stockfish. Has a few moves. Rook e8, I like. And then a5 coming. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Actually, first I want to look at like e4 as a possibility, because I know she's capable of playing e4. Um, and for this, <clears throat> I'm going to switch scenes. So here we see the pairings for round two. Um, I found a video on YouTube from my friend Kostya, and he played this as, um, or he played against Rochelle just a few months ago, and she played e4 against him, and he played knight c6 on move one, and I think I'm going to do the same thing if she does it, because uh, knight c6, what I just want is the moves from this game, um, yeah, so d4, d6, knight f3. Maybe I would play g6 here, but maybe knight f6 is preferable. Oh yeah, I'm, um, okay, I'll, I'll go back to chess base and just input the moves. So she played bishop d3, g6, c3, bishop g7, h3, castling. I'm just going to input the moves until I know, like, the deviation. So castling, e5. Yeah, very simple kind of King's Indian setup for white. Oh, she played she played bishop e3. Yeah, Kostya was saying castling is maybe more natural. But bishop e3 is still this. And then she played d5. Ah, uh, yeah, this is where Kostya played knight b8. Um, in this position, I would play knight e7. More natural. More typical for King's Indian. And then there's a nice threat here of, of knight e takes d5. So for example, if I castles here, I really like c6. Ah, maybe c6 is, has similar ideas, like c6, c4 takes, takes, and then takes. Two. Hmm, maybe black's not getting anything. And white's even better there. So let's look at this immediately. I mean, it's still a very playable position. I 
Yeah, I wouldn't mind this. So c4 is more natural. b5. What's b5? Ah, same idea. b5. It's a funny move. Takes b5. Knight e takes d5. Takes an e4. There's some issues with b2. I guess black's going to be down a pawn here. There's some comp. I don't know how willing I would be to go into this. a6. I mean, two bishops, though. Yeah, it's kind of a nice sort of Banco style gambit. And I could also play it very safe, like knight h5. It's probably way more natural. I'll just go for f5. Actually, this is probably what I'd go for. Okay, so I'm expecting d4, c4. So we'll stay with knight's tango. Um, I have to go soon, so let's um, let's wrap this up. I'm just going to filter through some games. Uh, we're going to open up Mega Dad Base. And it helps to know, like, if you're going to play an opening, it helps to know a GM who's played this opening consistently. This is one great thing about Chess Base. Very easy to filter through um, and, and find games of, of any sort of player. So Olegon is known for playing Knight's Tango. Um, I actually didn't know this until last night. I was talking with uh, with Ray Robson. I mentioned I, I'm planning to play the Knight's Tango, and he said something about Bolagon. So then I started checking Bolagon's games. And if we look here, this is actually a nice interface too, uh, if it loads. There we go. Okay, so d4, f6, being a little bit slow. The knight c6. Okay, so he's played this 35 times. Has a very good score. Um, yeah, let's look at his his wins. Oh wait, people can't see. I forgot that opened in the new tab. Essentially, this is a window I was looking at, um, and we see all of Bolagon's games here. It's basically an opening tree of uh, of his moves. So, okay, knight c6 played 35 times. The winning percentage is always for white, so he scores very well for black. All right, so I'm just going to go through. Let's click open. So Dobrov. Yeah, this idea d6, e5. Yeah, I actually saw this game last night. It's a nice game. Bishop e2, it's just so simple. Alright, Rezantsev, again very similar, when they play e3 you take, queen e7, what did b5 here? I'm being kind of quick and lazy just because I'm low on time, so just get instant feedback from Stockfish. Ah, uh, nice inter intermeso, taking, taking 95, okay, looks pleasant. Okay, bishop g4. Oh, I saw this game too. Yeah, this is a long fight, but okay, pleasant structure. Uh, let's keep going. Ah, so this is one of these lines. So white plays e3 rather than e4. I guess against e3, the bishop belongs on e7. Right, f8 as well. So a little bit tight. I like a6 though. Wow, e4. White just blundered. This, this was rapid. So white just blundered here. Okay. You keep going. Oh, this is funny. This turned into like some hippo. So a3, so same idea as Karwana, yada yada. 
yeah, interesting position. I mean, I, I want something dynamic. So, be okay with something like that. Sort by result, Ivana. Okay, so d6 and then g6. Here white plays e4. And e5, okay, so king's Indian. Wow, knight d4, is this a theoretical move? It's been played before. So what's the point after... Oh, e4 hangs in the end. That's nice. Huh. Maybe slightly drawish, but okay, black has never lost this position. Um, so basically a two-result game. Yeah, maybe slightly more pleasant for black. The e5 square has an e file. Yeah, funny move. Say rook e1, what happens? I just take the bishop. Okay. Wait. What does Stockfish think? Take the bishop? Hmm. It's also c5. Interesting. Takes, takes, h6. Yeah, I mean, this looks very. Very solid. This bishop could come alive later. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up because the game starts soon. I have to walk to the chess club. So let's close out this. Um, yeah. And again, because I, this is like preparation, this is supposed to be to be secret, I'll probably be uploading this after the tournament. So, um, if you want to look at the games from the tournament or find any more information, you can check out the links in the video description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.